hello guys welcome to our online tutorial for operation management today we're talking about chapter 17 which is about maintenance and reliability actually as a reminder this one is based on the book of sub operation management supply chain and sustainability by jay hazer and barry render the 11th edition now as i said we're talking about maintenance and reliability before we start um Ellen Johnson, which is, I think, the librarian president, I think in 2007, said something like, Africa is not poor, it is poorly managed. I think you have heard me uh, say it somewhere in class, something like that. But the reason behind this quote or this statement leads me to talk about maintenance and reliability in the way that today in Africa we believe that you just need to build something or you just need to build a nice hospital, a nice road and everything would be fine. And we'd be like all those developed countries but we forget something that it's mainly about management than it is about engineering between bracket. Then that's why you notice for example that someone can build a beautiful house like this or building like this and because there's no maintenance the building start looking like this. And you will see, especially your government, they build the road like this. And because there's no maintenance, they end up being like this. Which is things that we always see in our communities and so on, but we don't most of the time pay attention. That's why this chapter now becomes more important, because it helps us now to understand, to see things on an operational view, like a manager, that is it really important to build something if I cannot maintain it? And at the end of the day, I need to produce, I need to improve between bracket. Anyways, now you must know that every time that there is a problem like the building that I just show you that is failing, that is not working properly, or that has been damaged, there's been a failure somewhere. Every time that you see a road is not, they build it after a few months, it's not performed, is after a few months, it's not looking the way it looked before. It means there's been a failure somewhere. Then why is that failure? Is it more? Why is that failure more likely to occur? This is what what leads me to talk about the seven types of failure. So, firstly, we have the supply failure, the human failure, the organizational failure, the technology failure, the environmental disruption failure, the product and service design failure, and also the customer failure. Now. If we need just to take a quick overview about all these seven types of failure, first of all, you know that we have an organizational failure. This one is a failure that really happened because the procedure or the process of the company was defective. That's why you might see, for example, that you can find somewhere in a company there's a long queue. It's not really the customer's fault. It's the fault of the company because they do not have a good system to manage their queues. You have the product and service design failure. This one now is a failure of your product because a characteristic of demand maybe was overlooked or miscalculated in the way that we said for example that we are going to give you this product here and it's supposed to work like this but by the time you receive it is not working like that maybe we give you a phone that the screen is not working as it's supposed to work and something like that then we also have the technology and facility failure now this one here by technology and facility we, we simply mean that all the IT system the machine the equipment maybe the building and so on so yeah sometimes it happen that I mean sometimes you can even go in the bank they tell you that no we are offline like there's no internet or you're waiting for one of the tellers to help you say my computer just freezes now this one here is what we call a failure that happens because of the technology that is being used and then we also have the human failure now this one is a is most of the time this is a failure that happened because people are not really being able to perform to their duties or people making making mistakes now most of the time we have what we call errors and violation errors is more like this one is a failure that happened because there was something that you were supposed to do but you forgot or you didn't know that one is an error but now there's violation which is a failure that happened because there was something that you could have changed but you didn't change because you think like yeah instead of following a b c because of ex experience let me just go from a to c now you violate purposely some other stuff that will lead to human failure then we have the suppliers failure this one is any failure in the timing of quality of good and service 
by now you must know that every company that exists that does not operate by it, by its own it always have some people that or some other companies that are that that are outsourcing their product for example too or some Mm, some people that are really relying on to supply you with something let's say for example uh the company that supplies mcdonald's with vegetables does not show up in the supply they are expecting them at nine but they are not there at nine and mcdonald's is supposed to open at 10 which makes more like they'll have a delay or they won't have the product that they're supposed to get now this one is a is a failure that happens because of the supply then we have the customer failure now this one is more like it's a failure that happened because there's a misuse of the product or service that has been given to the customer they tell you for example that you need to use this product like abc you need to follow this specification but because we are customers and we never most of the time read the book that they give to us so you just skip some stuff and then failure happen that one is not a failure because the product was not really well designed it's not a, a failure that happened because it was a fault of the organization it's a failure on your side because you misused the product and then we have the environmental disruption related failure now this one is most of the time all the failures that are external to the company like for example you go to the university for regist uh, registration and then they tell you we have power outages no electricity so it's something that is out of the control of the university it's not like they planned it it just happened so these are a few of the types of the failures that you need to know in summary. The next, we also have now the strategic importance of maintenance. Actually, whether we're doing maintenance on reliability, the importance is the same. So we just need to make sure that we, we the importance is to keep everything running. So we need to maintain the production capability, for example. If a company was producing, let's say, 550,000 units per day, we when we are maintaining our our system we maintain it to keep that standard of of uh, 50,000 units we don't wanna uh, produce less because one of the machine was defective for example and also it's because organization must be able to produce goods and service at low cost you should know that every time that the machine breaks down you need to pay cost and even if you need to pay uh, by the time you pay cost you increase already the final cost even of the product that you will have to supply and you must now know that the objective of maintenance and reliability is to maintain the capability of the system while we control cost between bracket and in short as i said the objective is to keep the production system in good working condition so no matter everything that we'll be doing if it's not keeping our system in good condition then it's useless then next we have what we call reliability first of all reliability you should know that it is the probability that the machine will function properly for a specified time when for example they tell you that um you can drive for example this car at this speed for this amount of time if you follow all the requirement the car must work like they said then we'll say that these people are more reliable than this other one or this product is more reliable you can put it for example in a form of your phone for example if i tell you that this phone for example is what it's waterproof if you put it under water in a specific condition according to the specification that they tell you the conditions and your phone is still performing then it's more reliable you can also take it in terms of time for example if the a company tells you that they take a company like take a lot for example they say that they are going to submit or they, they are going to deliver a product to you in 24 hours and then exactly after 24 hours no more no less they come and they give it to you then they are more reliable so this is few stuff about reliability that you must know and these are the basic concepts now we have the important reliability tactics so these are ways that you can use to improve the reliability now first of all you need to improve the individual component in this case we just means for example that let's say for example you have five drivers i take a lot that should deliver product you must make sure that each driver for example is trained each is trained so that he can deliver the things on time and as the way things are supposed to be done and by the time we do that you will see that the reliability of the whole company will improve because if i only have one driver out of five that is more reliable and the others are not so four customers will complain that they didn't get the product on time which will affect also the reliability of the company meanwhile if i had all the five that were really reliable then 
my company would have been said to be reliable between bracket another way is to provide what you call redundancy by designing a system with backups now imagine for example you are typing an assignment and so on on a desktop and there's no electricity electricity i mean the assignment is something like 60 pages and you are on page 59 and by the time you wanted to save electricity is gone all the job that you did vanished what are you going to do so there's no backup imagine now if you had a backup like in case there's no electricity my computer can still be on maybe for five minutes the time for me to save my work and so on so this is the importance of backup even in companies now this is what they do we are working in a system whereby information is very important so we cannot just lose it at once we need to find ways to to protect it in case we want to lose it now fail saving this one it's a japanese word they call it pokai okay between bracket so this one is is, is is a is a method that you use when you want to they call it sometimes like fail saving or mistake proofing it uh, in order for us to reduce or to avoid mistake we are going to design some product that needs to work only when they are well when they are in the exact condition for example you will notice that example for, for electrician people that are really into electricity they'll tell you for example that every time that you are in, in a system you'll find a cable that is blue red green it means that the blue means this means this the green means this the red means this so that means each and every no matter the the the, the, the uh, no matter the device that you have you always find these three colors so it's just for you to avoid imagine if they just gave you cable without any color so it would be difficult to identify which one is which so that you you, you can make mistake but with fail saving method here they just help you to avoid mistake same thing apply for maybe for ink cartridge change if you want to change in your printer then you will always notice that there is they'll always tell you that if you need to change your ink cartridge you must use you must use this direction you must do it like this like this if you don't put it the correct in the correct position it won't it won't get inside so it avoids you also to make mistakes even for those that are driving for example you'll notice that there's always one way to sit on your car to you put your car and um, your keys inside your car so to start your car you need to follow the uh, you need to, to put the car i mean the keys in this in this position for example so they just do all those things for example to to make you avoid and uh, make mistakes even when you're driving for example every five minutes that the driver do not have a seat belt you have a beep that reminds you that there's a problem so those are few methods to make your your component or your product more really reliable next we have the reliability tactics now this one here we compare now a parallel ver ver versus uh, a series component first of all we have what we call system in series system in series we have three components we can say you have component one component two component three now with this system here we believe that if component one doesn't work component two and three won't work now this one it can apply let's say for example you are in a car wash like the image that you have there so a car cannot leave the exit if it has not yet been cleaned or when it's in the middle of the process so it starts first of all by getting into the system and then you get in a conveyor belt they will wash your car i mean that they will wash with the brush they will do big side washing brush they will dye whatever need to be dyed they'll polish so you notice that after each stage at a specific purpose and so on so you cannot skip the conveyor belt and reach already the top polishing it doesn't work like that so you need to follow each and every step while for example when you are working in a system in parallel you have three systems system and we have three component component one two and three so component one might not work while component two works or component three works this will apply maybe sometimes to atms when you go to a bank that is four five atms you might see that atm one is not working but it doesn't mean that you cannot use atm two three and the rest you can still use them so those one they are in parallel and not in series in short this is how you identify them in life then one thing that you need to know about the system in series is like if one component fails the whole system fails now the formula to find the reliability is like if we have three system r1 r2 r3 and you have a reliability of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 between bracket. So the values that you take, you just add, multiply them and you get the reliability of the whole system.
and you also have a, a system in parallel now this one is more like the reliability of an individual component does not really depend on the reliability of other component so as i said component one might not work but components two three four will work and this is the formula that you need to use then you have a mix something like it's a mix between the system in series and the parallel this one is is the backup is a system with backup already on it remember it what is what we said when you use like when you need to use like a reliability tactic so in this way what you do is like you have a backup which works more in the way that you have main component and then if those main components do not work we can have a backup that will help us uh still operate now the formula is a bit complex but with more calculations in our next video you'll be fine now how do you identify like let, let, how, how do you identify a system that is uh, as backup or redundant let's say we have three components c1 c2 and c3 and then we add two more components these one now they are backup c4 and c5 c4 is the backup for c1 and c5 is the backup for c2 so that means if c1 doesn't work we'll use c4 and then we use c2 c3 if c5 do not work we'll use c1 c5 and c3 so how do you identify which ones are the main component which one are the backup the main component are the one that are on the line there c1 c2 c3 they are in the same line they are linked like like in a chain those one are the main component while when you look at c4 and c5 it's true that they are, they are down below but there is no link between c4 and c5 they are not even related so those ones are backups now now that we have spoken about reliability maintenance this one is a bit more short and clear in short maintenance is about all activities that are involved in keeping a system or equipment in a working order so whatever you're doing you must make sure that your system is working this is all about maintenance and we always do it every day so there are sometimes we do maintenance let's say for example a preventive and we also have three types of maintenance we have the preventive maintenance or we can have we have what we call also the run to breakdown maintenance or run to failure break maintenance and the condition based maintenance a preventive maintenance this one is a maintenance that you do mistake has not yet happened but you do it just to maintain the facility or to prevent mistakes from happening or failure to happen so it's with routine inspection servicing and so on you might have your car is not damaged you just go to service to see if there's something wrong they can fix and so on but then you also have the run breakdown run to breakdown maintenance this one here you don't maintain maintain at all your facility you just wait when everything will be broken down then you will do an emergency or priority repair and so on so yeah and then you have now the condition based maintenance this one actually it's you about maintaining the the, the facility only when it requires maintenance but in general you cannot say that there's one maintenance that is better than the other all of them are maintenance and they really depend on the on the policy of the company there are some companies for example that really need to work on a breakdown basis there are also some others that need to work or with a preventive preventive maintenance basis let's say for example the company that provides electricity like escom for example they need to do preventive maintenance in the way that we so that they can avoid uh, accident and so on imagine if all at once escom doesn't work there's no electricity in the whole country imagine how many things will happen how many accidents will happen how many losses company would make and all those things so that's why you can have load shadings here and and there so that they can make sure that they are maintaining the facility to avoid breakdown maintenance but when you look at other companies for example like companies that manufacture cold drinks and so on most of the time they can deal with what they call breakdown maintenance they can have a machinery that they work with it only at the end of the year when the machine when the things close that they can do the breakdown maintenance now they 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 maintain everything every material and next year they reopen again now in short that it's about this part so in the following part we're going to talk about the calculation about reliability and maintenance and i really have i really hope that this video was useful and even the coming one will be will even be more useful thank you again for your time and yeah see you